What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Dad Tech channel. Today we're going to be unboxing and installing this battery tender. Alright guys, so I went out and I picked up this Deltran battery tender. I think every person needs one of these in their garage if they have anything with a battery. So basically if you have a car that sits for a long time, if you have an ATV, if you have a kid's ATV, kids toys that have batteries on them that are going to sit over the winter and not be played with outside, this is the perfect trickle charger to put on to make sure that those batteries keep their charge throughout the cold, throughout the winter, throughout whenever it's going to be sitting for a long period of time. Uh, it costs more to go out and continuously buy batteries if the batteries keep dying. So let's open this up. Let's see what it comes with. Um, first, let's look at the outside box though. So right here, compatible battery types. This is going to be important. You want to make sure that it works with multiple different types of batteries so that you're not locked into one. So this works with the AGM, the standard, and the gel. 12 volt, 1.25 amp. And we have accessories that come with it. So this one's cool because it has quick disconnects. So you have these, uh, I think they're called SCM connectors. I'll have to look that up. But basically you can put this on your battery and keep it there as a permanent installation. But on the other side of it, it has a quick connect and disconnect, which I'll show you when we open it. Otherwise, you can just use the regular alligator clips. So let's open it up and see what comes in here. So I'd opened this before. I've had this for a little while, and then I never got a chance to hook it up. So let's see. It's in here pretty good. Up, tight, and there it is. Pretty simple. Comes with uh, some instructions here, information, safety. Let's pull that out, and it's a very simple device, right? I mean, it's very light. Basically, you. Oh, here's your. So on this side, this is where the power charger is going to go. So that's probably in here, and these are the quick disconnects that I talked about. So let's open up the box. Oh, it all falls out. So when you open it the wrong way, that's what happens. <laughs> we should have five different things in here. We got one alligator clip, one alligator clip, one of these quick disconnects that's a permanent fixture, another one, and then here's the plug into the wall to give it power. Let's take a look at one of these. This is what I'm going to be using. The alligator clips are nice because you can hook this up to any battery. But let's take a look at this one first. Untie those. Let's take a look here. So one of the important pieces of this also is that it's fused. So that means if there's any kind of short, if you hook it up wrong, if there's any kind of power problem, this fuse is going to blow. That's not going to cause an issue to whatever you have it connected to. In my case, it's going to be my Polaris. Um, and it doesn't cause problems with this either. So this looks like it's a 7.5 fuse. Pretty nice, pops out. Just like car fuse. It is a car fuse. Put that back on there. This is also nice because it's weather protected. So that when you leave this on all the time and you're out on your ATV or something else and you're out getting it all wet, it stays in there. It's not going to cause a problem. Same thing with this. It's pretty cool because the di quick disconnect here is also protected. This weatherproof. Take it out in the water. Take it in the rain. Take it out in the snow. You're good to go. Just make sure that you put this back on. So this is going to connect your battery. Obviously positive is going to be the red. Negative will be the black. It'll bolt on and stay on there. All right, so on mine, we'll take a look and we'll see how it connects. Let's also show you here, like I said before, this side, basically it just goes together. And then you just leave it on there and it'll charge. Nice and simple. This one. Let's undo this. So basically you have the same thing. It's fused, has the connector, it's waterproof here. I don't know why it really needs to be waterproof on here because you're not having a permanent installation. It's nice to have just so you can keep dust out and things. Then for here, you'll just clip it on, 
positive, negative, and then unclip it when you need to. So I'll put this one back together. So I got a two bank charger because I have my Polaris and my son also has a small ATV. It's a Kimco 50cc. He's seven right now. It's pretty much perfect size. In a year, it's probably going to be a little bit small, but I want to make sure that I keep the batteries on both those good. Um, this will also be good for a lawnmower. I have a lawnmower also that I don't have a trickle charger on, but uh, it's stored in a different location. So I'm going to get a different battery tender for that. So as long as I'm happy with this one on the ATVs, I will get the same brand for my lawnmower. Also pretty cool, this is here. You can mount it to the wall, mount it to a shelf so it doesn't move. Um, right now I don't have a permanent installation for this piece. All right, so let's take a look at the Polaris and see what we can do here. All right guys, so we're back looking at my ATV. You guys have seen this in a few videos. This is my Polaris Sportsman 570 EPS. It's a great machine, really happy with it. Check out my other video if you wanna see the three-way headlight mod, if you wanna see this, um, LED light bar install. Um, also, I am hopefully going to get this out to the Lost Trails that's in Dunmore, Pennsylvania in a couple of days and hopefully I'm gonna have a video up for you guys of that location next week if everything goes as planned. If the weather holds out, I'm excited to really put some miles on this thing. So we'll see how it goes. Now, you'll also notice that in the back, I have some parts already taken off. So you'll see that the rubber gasket and the accessory access has been taken off. You can see how to take that off in the three-way headlight mod video, which I will link. Um, but basically it's just four screws, T25, that's Torx, And one, two, three, four, and this just pulls out. So once you get there, so what I did is, if you look, because the battery here is in a very uh, tight location, a lot of people will actually move this. There is a kit that you can get to relocate the battery. It's a battery relocate kit that relocates the battery to the back here. Which is kind of neat. I'm looking into possibly getting one of those. Uh, haven't bought one yet though. So one thing is that I pulled off this accessory panel here because I have this bus bar. You guys can see right here. You have positive and negative. And I trace these cables and these go direct to the battery. And I believe that this was here so that you could easily hook up the winch. I believe that this comes stock even if you don't have a winch but i'm not 100 percent on that so you have to check yours but what i'm going to do is i'm going to hook up the permanent installation to here rather than direct onto the battery because i think it's a little bit of an easier install and i think that it the, the cables are a little bit short so when we look at the total length of this cable here i mean you know it's not that long at all so it's going to be a little bit easier to run that than what I want to do. I don't want to have it kind of here. Maybe, even I'll, maybe I'll even put it here depending on how long it is so I can easily plug it in. So let me get the socket that I need for this and we'll get this all hooked up. Alright guys, so here's a decent view of what we're trying to get to. Um, basically, here is your positive, here's your negative. Um, I'm using a 3 8 socket. Let's take this off. I'm just going to loosen that up a bit. Loosen this up a bit. Make sure the light stays on there. Oh, my fingers are getting in the way. So 
fold those are loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this permanent installation now. And we're gonna hook this up. So let's put on the positive side first. And after I get this off, make sure I get this on this side of the coolant hose. So this will be bringing it this way. So my fingers are probably getting in the way of the light and what you guys can see. But basically, it's just this one screw. And we'll do the same thing over here. This one on here. Like that. So this is extremely simple. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck this. This is pretty big. I'm gonna tuck that in there. I want this, so let's tighten that up and then we'll talk about where I'm routing it up top. pretty big hole right here and that one's smaller so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put this behind that one keep it on a little bit better get a little bit better contact are probably all on the way of this video. <laughs> I apologize for that. It's a little bit of a tight spot, so I'm trying to get the best angle I can. Tighten these down a little bit. Right, that's tight. That's tight. Looking good. All right, let's take a look at where I'm going to route this down. All right, guys, from the other view now, you can see again we have this in here nice and tight. Positive, negative. It fuses right here, right next to the actual. <laughs> fuses, which is kind of nice. Um, what we want to do is that we, what we learned in the installation for the harness for the three-way headlight mod, this is the throttle cable. So what we want to do is run it behind there because I want to bring it up top. So I'm going to take this and bring it back behind here. One hand is a little bit tougher, All right? And now what I can do is that either and I'm gonna put it somewhere right in here, or I'm gonna run it up. What I think I'm gonna do is that if you can see in here, let's see if you guys can see in there. I wanna run it possibly right in there, and there is a spot right in here. I don't know if you can see my finger that I can come up through. So let me see if I can do that. I'm gonna need two hands to do it, and right now I don't have a good enough tripod to put my camera on. So let's see how this looks afterwards. All right guys, I know I need to get a shop light in here because this 
he's not working with all these videos that I'm doing. So I'm, I'm gonna get a new light, but for now, I got this going. So I got it here, right? And then I have it going up here. I actually have it behind all this stuff. There is room behind these hoses. So, and there's no pressure or anything. Just make sure you don't pull on it. Got it going up the side here. You guys can see that. Then it goes up in here. Now, it probably would have been easier if I just took the front off like I did when I was doing the lights. I did not take this piece off. I was able to get it up there. There are some tiny wires in here. So I was just showing you that guys before. Watch out for those tiny wires because you don't want to pull anything off. You want everything to be fine. So just be careful with those. But basically I have it going up through there and then it comes out right here. So I think that this is pretty cool. I think it's really easy to get to. Um, I need to get some zip ties, zip tie it up. But uh, let's take a look at how this thing works. So I have the cable here. Plugs into the back. Your two hands here. When you plug that in, you get greens to start, and they start blinking. So blinking means that it's ready to go, but nothing's plugged in. So now on the other end, this is bank one. Cable bank one here. We've got the blinking. I'm gonna go up to our connection here. And we're gonna try and Connection here. I'm gonna take this. I'm just gonna plug it in like that, nice and tight. You can see over here, solid light now. Solid light means it's plugged in. So bank two is still sitting there, not doing anything. Bank one is good. That says that it's charging. All right, guys. So there's four different lights that you're gonna see. So like I said, that blinking yellow light means that it's on. It's good to go. There's a microprocessor inside that is functioning, um, but nothing is connected. If you do have something connected and it's still blinking like that, that means that it's either it's not connected properly or there's something wrong with the battery. Then if you have a solid orange light like that, that means that it's charging and it's less than 80%. So as we can see, my battery is less than 80%. So I'm glad that I have this thing hooked up, especially since I want to go riding, make sure I have a full battery. Um, I know that the winch on here actually takes a lot out of the battery, so that's, even though it's a Polaris winch, I've noticed that, I don't know if other people see that problem. When it's blinking green, blinking green means that it's above 80%, solid green means that it's fully charged. So I believe on the side of here it actually talks about all that. Uh, yep, so whoop, that's way too bright, so you guys should be able to read that. Amber light flashes, AC power applied, battery not connected. Amber light steady, battery charging. Green light flashing, battery greater than 80% charge. Green light steady, steady, battery charge is complete. So you have it right on the side, which is pretty cool. So as we can see that my battery needs some charging, but this is an extremely simple hookup. I'm gonna do the same thing on my son's ATV. And you wanna know what, maybe we'll go take a look at that real quick. Let's go take a look. Alright guys, so this is the first time you've seen this, but this is my son's Kimco Mongoose 50. Um, his cousins actually had this, now he has it. Uh, great little bike to start on. So we want to make sure that this battery is staying charged also. So let's just... Uh, now we can see the battery inside here. Uh, it's a little bit dirty. <laughs> um, but basically we can do the same thing on here. We'll do is that we'll take these out. These you can do with a uh, screwdriver. Pretty cool. So this one we would do. You want to know what? I'll just use the alligator clips on this. It's probably easier rather than leaving the wiring underneath here. This is pretty accessible. Unlike the Polaris, the Polaris isn't that accessible. You get those alligator clips in there. Um, the wires were very short from Deltran also. So this thing is good to go. Little skull and crossbones there, huh? <laughs> so we're gonna charge this one up too, make sure everything's good. But honestly, 
If you have anything with a battery, you got your lawnmower, you got your kids' toys, you got a kids' quad, you got your quad, whatever you got, you're gonna leave it for even a week or two. Um, you're gonna leave it for the winter. You need to make sure these batteries stay charged. That battery tender is great. It comes as a single charger. You get a single charger for one battery. I have that dual so that I can do both these batteries right now. The problem is that I don't have them next to each other. So that could pose a little bit of a problem. I need to kind of rearrange a few things. Um, but you can also get it in a three bank and a four bank, which is really cool. I, I think it actually goes higher than that. I was thinking about getting a, another one because I have my lawnmower, but the lawnmower isn't in the same location as these. So I'll probably just get a single for that. But I'm very happy with that. It's supposed to be a pretty good device. I will keep you guys updated on how that goes. But I appreciate everybody subscribing recently. Appreciate all the thumbs up on my videos. If you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up. Um, do me a favor and subscribe. That helps me out. Doesn't do any, doesn't cost you anything. I will talk to you guys soon. Hope you like the video. Thank you.